2022 sees the return of the London Festival of Railway Modelling. Apparently. Starting with the layout set in the Big Four period, we visit Scout Green Crossing as a milk train passes by. This O-gauge layout is based on the crossing that was situated halfway up the Shap Incline on the West Coast Main Line in Cumbria. The 7F works a heavy goods along the line. Scout Green was a well-known location for enthusiasts to see hard-working northbound steam engines, such as this example. The layout itself is 18 foot by 16 foot 6, just the right size to fit in a double garage. As the heavy goods makes its way, a smaller goods train passes in the opposite direction. Harkness is an EM gauge layout set to represent the Belford to Harkness Light Railway, which connected the East Coast Main Line of Belford to the small seaside village of Harkness to the north of Bamber. The layout has some wonderful scenic features. I particularly enjoyed the beehives at the front of the layout. Now we move on to the British Railway steam era. Our first stop is Swainton for Mill Cliff on Sea. As a bullied rebuilt Light Pacific, 34045 Ottery St Mary arrives at the station. Sister Loco 34043 Coombe Martin arrives in the opposite direction. This double track layout is an end to end modelled in EM gauge with a small station and goods yard. It represents the southern main line and the new forest between Southampton and Bournemouth in the early summer of 1960. There's a wealth of detail and beautiful modelling here. I particularly enjoyed the Scots Pines trees based around the bridge area just before the station. We leave the layout as the bullied light Pacific makes its way towards the tunnel map. Next we visit Bolland Road and Turton Green, as a high mech falls into the station with a train of China clay wagons. The layout is from Ilford and West Essex Model Railway Club and is modelled in N-Gage. As the high mech pauses, a BR standard class 5 passes in the opposite direction with a mix of horse boxes and cattle vans. The layout includes a branch line, which we see a class 08 shunter moving a small goods train across it. And the piece is once again disturbed as a western thunders through on an express. Next we have a quick stop at Freshwater on the Isle of Wight. Modelled in 2mm fine scale, this layout is absolutely superb. This beautiful amount of detail, particularly considering the scale it's modelled in. Wonderful to look at, even if the trains weren't moving. We find ourselves at Arran Quay, which is a small quayside yard on the River Arran, near Littlehampton in West Sussex, set in the 1950s. A P-Class has just arrived at the yard and has started shunting its train. The layout itself is designed to be small so they can fit in the back of a car. Which is quite impressive considering that this layout is modelled in O-Gauge. 
At Welt Village, modelled in OO gauge, is based on the depot on the Wisp Beach and Upwell Tramway in East Anglia. The representation of the village and its depot is wonderful to see and beautifully modelled. But it must be the line's last day as a class 04 shunter pulls a special full of passengers riding in the wagons and the brake. X-Bridge is modelled in 12mm gauge and we were lucky to catch it in the rays of sunlight as they came through the windows of the exhibition hall. Grinby Brook is an O-gauge fine scale layout based on a fictional station set on the now closed XLNWR line between Whitchurch and Chester in Shropshire in the period of 1954 to 1964. An XGWR pannier tank is seen shunting the yard. Being on the boundaries of the London Midland and Western regions, the trains are predominantly London Midland, but with a sprinkle of Western Midland workers. As the pannier carries on shunting, Duchess Class 46256, Sir William A. Stania, FRS, passes with passenger work. The layout was certainly designed with entertainment in mind. No sooner has one train left than another one appears. As a short while later proves when a Jubilee class passes with a parcel working. No sooner had the Jubilee gone than an XGWR Small Prairie 5533 makes its way round the layout with a short goods. And as the short goods runs out of view, another freight passes in the opposite direction in the hands of an ex LNWR Bowen Cook 082 tank. Now we are at Redbridge Wharf, a Noah Gage layout, as a high mid class 35 arrives on a passenger work. The layout is set in 1967 and it's the last of the steam hold expresses on the southern region, including the Bournemouth Bell. Redbridge Wharf contains the sleeper works, which has been supplying the railway since 1884. It is situated on the northwestly shore of Southampton Water at the mouth of the River Tess in Hampshire. As the Hymet passes by, a warship travels in the opposite direction at the hands of a cement worker. With the vast body of water at the front of the layout, and with the track set so far back, it does give the feeling that you're standing on a cliff top looking over the railway line. Meanwhile, on the top line at Cherry Orchard, a Class 24 comes to a stand at the signal. 
This 32mm gauge loud started off as an industrial narrow gauge and has grown ever since. The layout itself is based on cherry orchard brickwork in Essex. The layout is an impressive 36 foot by 4 foot and depicts a narrow gauge system between the clay pits and the brickwork. Here we see a small narrow gauge locomotive going over the crossing before getting into a spot of bother. <laughs> I've visited Hooper's Agricultures before with the Great Electric Train Show, but this layout is so large that I've not managed to visit the entire length of it. Today we're at the depot yeah. where a Class 68 yeah. is running into the shed. Outside the shed, Class 66135 appears to be receiving some severe attention. Now we see a Class 08 shunter as it moves some fuel tanks around the site. The next layout is another previous scene. Yorkshire Pennines in N-Gage is an impressive layout, all DCC controlled and completely open with no food yard. Here we see a container train coming to a stand as an Azuma takes the inner line. And that, now in a minute you'll see all that look clear because I'm only showing active jetways. A little later, a pacer that had been seen on the top circuit has made its way down to the bottom as it approaches the station. It passes a class 57 and 66 working a freight liner train. Before arriving at the station, a heritage unit can be seen arriving on the station on the top circuit. Next was another catch up with a layout I'd previously seen at the Great Electric Train Show. Oak Road is an OO gauge layout depicting Great Western running in the west of the country. Here we see a Class 70 in Colas livery passing with a rake of empty ballast wagons. The virtual quarry in the background is a nice touch and adds that little bit of extra interest to the layout. A local train in the hands of Class 150-2 arrives in the bay of the station. Not long after, a Great Western IET arrives on the platform. 800-004, Sir Daniel Gooch. And after carrying out his station duties, the IET departs Oak Road. And immediately after, the 150-2 departs the station before the driver finds himself in his proper difficulties. Before or after lunch? For what is simply a double track mainline loop, the layout has a lot of character and I really enjoy the countryside scene. The driver of the DMU seems to have recovered from his difficulties as an IET flashes by. 
next to some more heritage traction as a HST pulls into one platform and a Class 47 passes in the other with a parcel working. <laughs> I like how Mike, who built the layout, has framed one of the scenes by having the trees gapped and spaced apart so that you can just glimpse the trains passing through. It's a very effective use of scenery. Another HST thunders through Oak Road. It's a sight I certainly miss. We swap passengers for freight as a Cogolas delivery car 70 works an empty ballast train passing a freight liner 66546 on an MFD working. The mix of loaded war wells and war flats is an impressive sight, and I really do like this train. Talking of like, if you've liked this video then please click the like button, and if you've really enjoyed it, please subscribe. And we to Park Oak Road, 43172, Harry Patch, Butler Street. Gravity Oak is an engaged layout. This is a small layer, 4 foot 9 scenic and 2 foot fiddle yard. Set between 2000 and 2017, it's a terminus of the former GWR branch, which is still in operation for passengers on the border of West Midlands and Shropshire. Our next stop is the OO Gate Fair from Deadman's Lane, which is based on the network rail depot in Derby. The scene is dominated by a fleet of yellow coaches and locos. It's absolutely fantastic to look at. There's a wealth of detail, including the signaling centre in the background. Here we see West Coast Railways Class 37 coming to a stand at a red signal. For those who are a fan of tractors, this is the perfect layout for you. As the 37 went for the signal in the opposite direction, a network rail class 950 passes by. A short while later, and the tractors have now got the road to them. The train even includes a slim jig on the back. As I say, this layout definitely does not lack tractors. There are no less than seven in this scene itself. Superb! There's more tractor action as class 37402 in large logo blue passes by with Caroline for inspection. Whilst on the main line, an East Midland service flashes by. But it's not just class 37 that are out. We now have a flurry of freight trains, the first of which is class 66, 66099 on a ballast working, mostly made up of auto ballast brackets. 
and a few adults on the rear. The next 66 to pass by is GBRF Celebrities Loco Evening Star as it works an empty ballast train back in the opposite direction. Next to DB Loco in maritime livery passes by with some hopper back. As it passes by, I thought I'd take the opportunity to get a better view of the layout. Particularly like the Eurostar car that's parked to the siding. A nice little detail. Other traction on display is a Class 31 and a Class 73 parked up in front of the depot. And finally, 66504, your Freightliner's revised green livery, passes by on a Freightliner working. We now move on to Narragan and Manantatus, which translates to Potato Mountain. The layout is a simple circuit which runs around some lovely scenery. Here we see a double fairy working a mixed train around the layout. Appleton Dean depicts a narrow gauge line running for a station providing rail access to a factory and builder's yard during the 1930s. The rolling stock is either scratch built or from modified kits and features interest in wagons, carriages and locomotives. The buildings are also scratch built using a variety of techniques. Now we move out towards the continent. Firstly, we visit America. This is a DCC concepts demonstration layout and wasn't technically part of the layouts of the show. However, its sheer impressive size was something I felt I had to show you. 
Here a Shea geared locomotive with two lumber wagons works its way up the incline. This is an impressive sight. Staying in America, we move on to more modern times and Kamiak Ball. This 20 foot by 6 foot layout features a fictional town in the Palouse area of eastern Washington State in the 1970s and 1970s period, showing the early stages of the Burlington Northern Railroad. The layout features some wonderful vibrant autumn colours, or fall, as they say in America. Loco 1976 is working a caboose and flat cars around the yard, whilst a switcher with another caboose and grain hoppers arrives a little later. The Italian Railway Society also had a small layout on display. Although not technically one of the layouts that was on show, it was an absolute delight to look at, especially its compact size and the fact that it was a mainline depot squeezed in what was possibly around four foot to two foot wide. There's an awful lot going on in what is such a small layout, and I particularly like the almost flush low relief buildings used in the background. We move north towards the Alps with the Swiss Railway Society layout, Beckenvik. Beckenvik is a purpose-built HOM exhibition layout. The layout displays a wide range of prototypical trains, anywhere between 1980 to 2015. It's a wonderful little layout, and so much to see on it. But of course it's far more enjoyable when we get to see some trains running. We now move across to Germany for Weidenstein, a HO gauge branch terminus layout. Weidenstein represents the terminus of a branch line in the former kingdom of Bavaria in the southeastern corner of Germany. The period is the mid 1950s to late 1960s. Here we see a small tank locomotive running round its train before preparing to depart. The modelling period allows steam locomotives pre-World War I 
to be seen alongside more modern motive power. And our tour of Europe concludes in France at Yu Depot. Yu is a real town in northern France, just inland from the resort of Letter Pont. Its O-gate layout is almost as impressive as the roster of logos that it has. All fitted with DCC sound, some of them also have steam, and it's excellent to see. We now move across to China and Beijing, a HO gauge layout depicting steam as it was in 2001. Here we see a heavy drain making its way up to the steelworks with a 1 in 30 grade so it has the assistance of double bankers on the rear. In the centre of the lab is a double track China Rail main line and trains can be seen heading to and from the city station, off stage to the left. China Rail was almost completely steam free by 2001, but if you're lucky you might see the occasional steam hold train on the main line. The foreground is a bi-directional secondary line, which in 2001 was still predominantly using steam. And the bankers return from the still works. And finally, we move to the island of Sokol, where Percy and Thomas are running around the back and demonstration lab. <laughs> Before returning to Atwell Village to see a special visitor.
Well, that's all. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like. If you've really liked it, then please subscribe. It's absolutely free. Till next time, take care.